I've been pushing my kids, my wife and I have been pushing our kids pretty hard since their birth. We had a Kung Fu master living with us for years and uh, all in an effort to make them more resilient and tougher and able to deal with real life when they move out of the house. So um, I wanted to write a book on parenting to give folks an idea on how to do it and, and feel good about it. My wife was dead set against it. She said, what the hell do you know? You're, you're a dad for the first time. And so I convinced Dr. L, Dr. Laura Pence, who's on the cover with me here. She's actually in the room with me. Uh, so that this way I had a real true doctor that said, Joe's not crazy. Or maybe she said, Joe is crazy. And um, there's really some good methods and methodologies to this. And there's a reason for it. What's doing, everybody? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood. Today's guest on the podcast is Joe DeSena. Joe DeSena is the creator and CEO of Spartan Race. He's got a brand new book out right now titled 10 Rules for Resilience, Mental Toughness for Families. He is a New York Times bestselling author already. I highly recommend this book. Joe DeSena stopped by the podcast about two years ago. It's a big honor to have him back on the podcast. Get down there, smack the subscribe button, tap that like, and let's jump into it right now with Joe DeSena on First Class Fatherhood. Joining me now, First Class Father, Joe DeSena. Welcome back to First Class Fatherhood. Thanks for having me. All right, well, let's get an update on the four kids here. How old are they now? How are they doing? All right, the oldest is 16, boy. Next down is 14, boy. And we got a 12-year-old girl and an 8-year-old girl. The girls play soccer. The boys wrestle. And um, they're training like crazy. They speak fluent Mandarin. I've been uh, really like a maniac on the Mandarin, on the math. Um, everybody's good. Everybody's healthy. I got no complaints. Very cool. Good to hear. I got a copy of your book, 10 Rules for Resilience. We're going to hit on that in just a second here. If you could, Joe, just a reminder to the listeners and my new listeners here, just hit us with a quick, uh, simple capsule form about a little bit about your background and what you do. Yeah. So Joe DeSen, I founded Spartan. Spartan is in 45 countries, 325 events. Um, we basically take people through barbed wire, fire, mud, up and down mountains. The worse the weather, the better. And in, do and in doing so, we transform folks. And uh, I've had 10 million people come through the system from the Kardashians, Lance Armstrong, Alicia Keys, Serena Williams, to, to moms and monks and Marines and you name it. Uh, they go from you know five years old to 85 years old. And everybody's looking to just push themselves outside their comfort zone. That's why they sign up for one. Um, I've been pushing my kids, my wife and I have been pushing our kids pretty hard since their birth. We had a Kung Fu master living with us for years and uh, all in an effort to make them more resilient and tougher and able to deal with real life when they move out of the house. So um, I wanted to write a book on parenting to give folks an idea on how to do it and, and feel good about it. My wife was dead set against it. She said, what the hell do you know? You're, you're a dad for the first time. And so I convinced Dr. L, Dr. Laura Pence, who's on the cover with me here. She's actually in the room with me. Uh, so that this way I had a real true doctor that said, Joe's not crazy. Or maybe she said, Joe is crazy. And um, there's really some good methods and methodologies to this. And there's a reason for it. That's it in a nutshell. Yeah, I, I really love what you do, Joe, what you stand for. And it's, it's so much needed right now, especially, uh, you know, the book, 10 Rules for Resilience, Mental Toughness for Families. And uh, I want to go right right to the book here, if I could. I know you got one chapter here um, on uh, failing forward. And I just want to read right here from the book. Failures more than successes tend to stick around. They loop in our mind over and over. But if we learn to shift perspective on our failures, this loop provides an opportunity for us to gain wisdom. This is how we fail forward. How do you get this fail forward? How, how can you relate this to uh, fatherhood, Joe? You know, I said to my son a couple of months ago, we, we lost a, a wrestling match. You, they lose a lot, right? Wrestling is a tough sport, just like any sport or anything in life. And, I, and he was upset. And I said, Jack, I said, you're going to lose about 300 more matches, <laughs> like minimum. Get used to it. Learn from it. Study what mistakes you made. Like, that's just the deal. I, I can't even tell you how many times I failed, how many times you failed, right? We all fail. And, and as long as it's not a fatal failure, it's good. Do an after action report. Write down why you failed. Were you prepared? Did you train enough? Was it stuff outside your control? Was it in your control? Right? Like 
if you if you block it all out and you're so emotional about it, you don't learn from it, then it was a waste of time. But if you use it to make yourself better, you should thank God. Thank, thankfully, you failed. You got an opportunity now to be better. Imagine yeah. even if you never failed, if everything you did was perfect. And then what? Then when you're at the then when you're at the big moment under the lights and you've never failed and you got no practice failing and you don't then you lose the big one. I'd rather lose all the way up to the top, right? Learn from it and then win the one that matters. Yeah, very well said. And Joe, we seem to be stuck in this uh, every kid gets a trophy philosophy, which has been just a colossal failure, I think, in our society. And and just to your point there, I usually use the example of like someone like Michael Jordan, who was cut from his high school basketball team and, and that lit a fire under him. And, it, you know, God only knows if that incident didn't happen, maybe we don't see the same guy uh, down the line of life. That that really, he responded to that in such a, tr a traumatic way that made him the best player of all time. And I think we're doing our kids a disservice by this, um, no kid loses, every kid's a winner, we don't keep scoring the games. Uh, what's your take? Of course. I mean, I, look, I don't know Tiger Woods' background, but his dad, uh, obviously an amazing player, right? Amazing golfer. His dad was there and kind of protecting him keeping them on the guardrails. And when dad was gone, the guy went off the rails. And so my guess is, um, if you use that example versus Michael Tripp, like you want him to fail. You want him to fail young. You want him to fail fast. You want him to learn from it. So that again, when they get out of the house and they're faced with adversity, because we're all faced with adversity, shit's gonna go wrong. There's some sirens here in Boston. They go by all the time. Sorry about that. No problem. But, um, You'd be doing your kids such, such such a favor. Look, we practice piano, we practice math, we practice everything in life. Why don't we practice failure? Why don't we practice adversity? Why are we afraid of it? Yeah, it, it seems like that's the way. And I know one of the other uh, chapters you got in the book here, uh, Discipline Breeds Responsibility. Those are two words that frighten the daylights out of a lot of people today, discipline and responsibility. Uh, so how do we do that now? How do we do this as dads? How can we um, help our kids become better disciplined, which will ultimately lead to them having more responsibility? Yeah, I mean, you got to you got to have rituals uh, for us. The rituals have started at 515, 530 in the morning. Sometimes I wake them up with bagpipes. I wake them up with ACDC, turn on the lights, the dog, the bird. We've got these rituals. We're disciplined around waking up early and to the point where it's just going to be wired in their brain. This is what we do. Well, I wish I wish your kids had more sleep. Well, then they got to go to bed earlier. But but we've got strict discipline around it. We do Mandarin every day. Well, there was a party yesterday. Can we take today? No, we do it every single day, just like we brush our teeth, just like we go to bed. We're very disciplined about certain things. We set standards. And when you do that, when you do that, life just becomes easier. When you're all over the place, and some days you wake up at noon, some days you wake up at eight, some days you work out, some days you don't, some days you eat healthy, you're a mess. Your life's a mess. So it's harder on the way in to be disciplined and stick to those rituals, but it's easier in the long run. Choose your hard, right? You wanna have a messed up, difficult life, but, but it feels easier at the moment, or do you want to do the work now and save the fun for later? That's the way I think about it. Yeah, well said. What about, though, Joe, for the family that's already gone off the rails? They're in these bad habits, uh, got multiple kids. They're scattered all over the place. They haven't been living this type of disciplined uh, lifestyle. What's the first step they can take if they want to make a commitment to start making a, a lifestyle change for the family? What's the first way for that family to kind of rein it in and get a new lease on life here? Well, you got to all sit around. You got to lay out your plan, your purpose, your mission as a family. Make sure everybody's bought in. If the kids are young, you mandate the buy in. You don't have to ask them for buy in. And um, if they're older, I'd, I'd put them in the military. <laughs> it sounds, sounds terrible, but I've had a lot of adults, very wealthy, affluent adults, send me kids that are 21, 22 years old. It's too late. It's too hard to make those changes at that point. I'd rather, I mean, it sounds terrible. It's not, I, don't, I know there's a lot of folks saying, oh, my God, that's so extreme. But um, look, you do the work at 21, 22. We got a shot at 27, 28 years old being on track. We don't do the work. We keep the same old, same old. 28, 29, kids maybe are still living in the basement.
Yeah, and, 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 and Joe, is there a fine line on when, when you, as a parent, you know you've pushed too much? One of the things I know right now, and I talk as it relates to fatherless homes, we've got a, a problem with youth suicide in our country, and uh, the biggest majority of that are kids that are growing up without a dad, but that's a side take. Now, uh, suicide is the second leading cause amongst uh, kids 10 to age 21 in this country, and it's gone up every single year since 2007, and I don't think it's a coincidence that that's the same year as the first iPhone uh, hit the shelves as well. So how do we know as parents if we're pushing too hard? When is it time to, to peel back a little bit? How do we know that if we're getting a little bit uh, too overboard on, on our harsh uh, discipline or parenting and doing this philosophy? Well, you know, you want to you got to love your kid. Right. And they got to know there's unconditional love there. And you don't certainly don't want to hurt uh, your children. But um, but you also don't want to be so soft and so lax and so complacent that the kid is not uh, getting after it and not feeling good about his or herself um, and gaining confidence from those, those uh, picking themselves up from those failures and, and those accomplishments. So there's a fine line. There's a movie, uh, an old movie, The Great Santini, or I don't know, I think they made it into a movie. Like you could push too hard as a parent. There are moments when I got to check myself and say, hey, Joe, you pushed a little too much tonight. Ease it off. Give your son a hug. You know, I sent I sent them to Europe this uh, this summer. Flights were dirt cheap because of COVID. I got a friend who's a Green Beret. I said, do me a favor, keep an eye on them. Let them think they're backpacking through Europe, but make sure they get home after two weeks. And I gave them, you know, just some just some free time, just some R and R time. So um, you gotta you gotta watch it. I, there's no way to set. Uh, something up in this call that says you can go to here, but you can't go to no. You got you got to keep an eye on it and 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 head check yourself. But um, if, if you have a choice between soft and hard, always go hard. Yeah, and, and just like you, Joe, I have four kids myself, and and, and all four of them require different. Uh, styles of discipline and, and different ways, uh, uh, you know, I, I call it their love language, whatever you want to call it, that you all respond to discipline in different ways. Do you find that you're this, yourself with your four kids, you have to kind of treat them, you have one blanket fits all, or do you e e treat them each individually in different ways when it comes to your process of, of discipline and doing this uh, philosophy? As you ask that question, I think about what the, how they each act at 5.15, 5.30 in the morning, waking them up, and they definitely all act differently, but like, my answer is I take no prisoners. We're getting up. Uh, yes, you, you might like to be coddled. This one, like, like we're getting up. I don't have time. You don't have time. We're waking up. That's it. Um, could you imagine in boot camp, uh, if you could think of any one of those military movies where when the bugle goes off and everybody's got to wake up, um, the, the, the drill sergeant said, well, John likes to be coddled. Uh, Frank, like, no. We're waking up. The lights are on. Everybody up. Add attention. Clean. Make your bed. Let's go. So, um, yes, later in the day, does, does each kid require a different style of communication? Sure. But um, there are certain standards. There are certain things we do as a family. I do it with them, so I model the behavior, too. It's not like I'm, I'm sitting from an armchair couch saying, uh, you know, you do it, but I'm going to watch. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm in, I'm in the in the mud with you. Yeah, really good stuff, Joe. What about as far as the Spartan race? Have you have you seen families come into this and do it together where the mom, the dad, and the kids are, are, are all competing? Obviously, the kids in the kids' Spartan race. Uh, and have you seen, you know, fundamental changes in the families before and then after they competed? Hundreds and hundreds of thousands. And, and the emails and the messages and the meetings I get are, oh, my God. I would have had no connection to my 12 year old, 13 year old, 14 year old, 15 year old. Over the last three years, we went and did 21 Spartan races around the country. We trained together, we traveled together, we built bonds together. If my son or daughter was playing soccer, I wouldn't be on the field with them. I wouldn't have that connection. This has been unbelievable. Um, yes, the stories are amazing. Awesome. And how did you make out during this entire pandemic? Obviously changed things around. How did it affect Spartan Race? And uh, were you able to still get some races in throughout the pandemic? Did you ever see uh, Rocky One? Yes. You remember when Apollo Creed was beating him to death for that moment in the uh, ring? Yes. That was what I was like. I was getting beaten to death during the pandemic. <laughs> Shut down in 45 countries. Everything that can go wrong went wrong. Banks calling, wanting their money. But uh, we're back. We're not back uh, around the whole world. We're, 
99% back in the United States. So, um, yeah, we're coming back. All right, good stuff. And obviously, we mentioned here 10 Rules for Resilience. The book uh, available, link will be in the description of the podcast episode. What's next for you here, Joe? What are you working on? What kind of projects or goals you got for yourself here for the future? We're in the, we're in the middle of filming a TV show, um, funny enough, for CNBC. So i um, super excited about that. Very cool. All right, last thing I want to hit you with here, Joe. I love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast, what type of advice do you have for that new dad or for that about-to-be father who's out there listening? Make the tough choices. Don't worry about winning the popularity contest. Yeah. Well said. Love the message. Honored to have you back on the podcast. Joe DeSena, you're a first class father all the way. And thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on First Class Fatherhood. You're the man. Thanks for having me.